Meet Cal, the Cavalry Asset Library. This is a plugin that I've been working on and it is finally released since you are watching this video. I'm gonna do a quick demo to show you the files that you'll get if you download this plugin and how everything works. Okay, so I've just got a blank scene here. These are the files that you'll receive if you download this plugin. We have the actual script file here. We have the readme. This tells you how to install things, how to use it, what all the different panels are, all that stuff. Definitely read that as well. And it also comes with a free asset library that I've created just for Cal. So to install this script in Cavalry, we're gonna go up to help, and then we're gonna go to show scripts folder. This pulls up this folder and you just open that up and this is where all the scripts live. So now all you need to do is just drop in this Cavalry Asset Library, JSC, and the script will automatically appear in the scripts folder. For now, I'm also going to drop this freebie library in here as well, but we'll need to import it through the actual script. Back in Cavalry, all you need to do is go to the scripts menu and find Cavalry Asset Library, right there. When you click on it, this is the first screen that you will see. Because you haven't saved any assets yet, it'll show you the save asset screen so that you can save your first asset. If you wanna dock this script, you can just click here, pull it up here, get it where you like it. And if you want to always have this panel here, make sure to go to window, save workspace, and save it as whatever your workspace is. Now, every time you open Cavalry, it'll be right there. So here I've got an example where I have an ellipse that has a color array on it being put through a duplicator. And then I've also connected an oscillator onto the shape position Y with a stagger on that. So it has animation, it's got a bunch of things connected to each other. Let's say that this is the rig that you want to save. So all you need to do is select all your layers and group them, name that something interesting. And then up here, you would just name your asset. We're also going to call it DNA. With this folder selected, you just hit save selection. So you'll see that Cal automatically generates a thumbnail based on this rig and puts it inside of your library. It also sends you back to the main panel of this plugin, which is this. So here you have your library dropdown where you will see all of the libraries that you've generated or imported. Right now, we just have the default one. In this window, you will see all of the assets that you have saved. Down here is where you can edit things. So if you say, oh, I accidentally did lowercase and I want it to be uppercase, you would just select the asset that you want and you'll see that this automatically updates as well. So you can just change this to capital DNA, confirm edit, and there you go. You've renamed your asset. You can also move your assets to other libraries, which I'll demonstrate in a moment. So now if we delete this, to load an asset into your scene, there are two ways to do it. One is to click on it to select it and then hit add to scene. And you see that it adds everything exactly as you had saved it. So all of your layers in their order, inside the folder, everything's connected, everything is animated. So let's remove this one. The other way to add things to your scene is to just double click. So here I've got another little setup. So once again, we're going to select all the layers and go ahead and group them. I'm just gonna call this thing. Now this is the main panel and that is also this button. This button will take us back to the save selection panel. So main panel where all your assets live, save assets panel. So with this selected, we just give it a name and we'll call it thing. And now, instead of saving it to the default library, I'm going to click this checkbox and then create a new library called Things. So with this selected, we hit Save Layer. And you see, we now have a library called Things and Thing lives inside of it. So let's delete this one, double click, there it is. And up here, we just go back to the default library and there's our DNA thing that we made earlier. So now if we say that well, DNA is a thing, so we want to add it to the things library. All we have to do is down here with our asset selected, select which library you want it to go to, and you can hit confirm edit. That'll push it over, but we can also change the name at the same time if we want to. If we left this as just DNA and sent it over to things, it would maintain the same name, but you can just do both actions in the same move. So we hit confirm edit. And now the default library is empty and the things library has both of those objects in it. So now if we double click, our DNA comes into the scene. And even if we have this selected, if you double click on a different object, it will import it at the root level. I find that this is how you typically want to import assets like this. However, if you want it to be imported as a child, let's delete this one. 
With DNA selected, you'll just hold down Alt or Option and add that to the scene. And now it adds in as a child of whatever you had selected. And as always, they both maintain their animations and everything. Now, if we decide that we just really don't like this thing anymore and we wanna delete it, we can come down here, click on the garbage can, and then you click on this checkbox and then you click permanently delete and it's gone forever. I purposely made that a three-step process because once it's gone, it's gone. So just be careful when you're deleting assets. Now let's talk about the settings. So over here in the gear icon are all of the user settings. So up here is create asset in a group. If this is checked, then anything that you import to your scene will be imported into a folder. Earlier, I said that you should group all your layers and put them into a folder first and save the asset that way. If you do that, then you can just keep this setting off. However, as an example, if I make something like a red circle and then a yellow square, make this a little bit smaller so we can see, and this is a child, here we'll add an oscillator. So we have some shape like this. Technically, all you would need to select is the ellipse shape. We'll name that and we'll save it to our things library. And it'll actually pull along all of its children and anything that's connected to it. So technically you don't have to put things into a group in order to save them. However, there are some edge cases where not everything gets pulled along, which is why I think it's best practice to group everything and then select the group. That way you're guaranteed to not lose anything. So back in the settings panel, the next options we see are backup libraries and set frequency. So this button, backup libraries now, if you click it, it will save a copy of all of the libraries that you have in a separate folder, just in case something goes wrong. And we can see that back in our scripts folder, when we start up the script, it actually creates the Cal assets folder. In here, you can see the libraries that you've created. Uh, this folder just has some icons in it. This folder has your library backup. So you can see our libraries also exist here. And then in images, you have your thumbnails for large, medium, and small. So if you click on the Backup Libraries Now button, it will immediately back up all of your libraries. With the frequency number, Cal will automatically back up your libraries every X times that Cal is opened. I have mine set to six, so every six times I open Cavalry, my libraries will be backed up. You can set this number to whatever you want, and if you set it to negative one, it'll never back up, but I don't recommend that. So next, we have Regenerate Library Images. And basically, let's say that something happened where an image got deleted for some reason. So if we go back to our libraries, we see that, okay, thumbnail's missing, something's wrong. Regenerate the library images, and it recreates all of our thumbnails. Next, we have Clean Assets and Active Library. This one, you'll most likely never need to touch, and the README doc tells you all about what that does. And finally, in here is where you can import external libraries. So let's go ahead and import the extra library that comes with Cal. Just click on this folder icon. And by default, it'll open up the scripts folder with the Cal assets folder selected. So I'm just gonna go back one and find our Cal freebies library. So click on that, click open, and then import Cal library. Sometimes it takes a bit to generate the thumbnails. So just wait until it's done doing what it's doing. And so now you see that we have another library in our list and these assets. And also this little button here will let you change the size of the thumbnails. So a real quick overview of what you get. This blue man rig is this little character that I have in a lot of my videos, all rigged up. And the pink star is what he looks at. We have an eyeball rig, so it'll look at the target but within a certain bounds. We have these little shapes that just kind of randomly cycle and you can set the width and height to wherever you like it. We have the Goober machine gun. So this is a physics system launching out with a bunch of different things connected. Uh, this folder gets a, little, gets a little wild, but this also just shows you that you can save really complex rigs into Cal, no problem. And finally, this little physics explosion. And that's how you can save assets in Cavalry.
There's also a lot more features that I'm working on to expand the functionality of Cal. If you'd like to get it and support the channel, the links are below.